it's just one of those titles from camp, you know? Yes, sir. All right, let's see if we live. Shalom, shalom. I want to give all praises unto our power. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekaha Kodash. All right, the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. His son's name is Yahweh Shai. The Rekah HaKodash is the Holy Spirit. That's what comforts and guides us in all understanding on this walk. All right, until Babylon is destroyed. Double honors to our elders and apostles that came back. The reincarnation, because reincarnation is real. All right, reincarnation is real. <clears throat> and they're known as Great Millstone in these times. And speaking of reincarnation, all right, we're going to be reading King Solomon came back as Yahweh Shai. So we're going to be actually reading about Yahweh Shai in one of his former lives, if you will. You know what I'm saying? So um, this is in our first Kings. We're going to get straight to the point. Again, it's just me, Brother uh, Monagon here. We've got Zah Nala. Hello. We're from the Great Millstone D.C. Church. The head's here in D.C. All right. Now, this is in first Kings, uh, the eighth chapter. There's another one in Chronicles, if I'm not mistaken. But um, we're going to go to deal with this one here in Kings, and this is the prayer of dedication. Um, I'm going to read a couple of verses, then I'm going to jump down to the point that's dealing with the video title where it says, King Solomon prayed for heathens, the question mark. All right, so this is 1 Kings 8 and 22. It says, And Solomon stood before the altar of Yahweh in the presence of all the congregation of Yahshua Allah and spread forth his hands toward heaven. And he said, Lord, Yahweh, power of Israel, Yahshua Allah, there is no God like thee. In heaven above or in earth beneath, who keep his covenant and mercy with the servants that walk before thee with all their heart. Who has kept that servant David, my father? Thou promised him, thou spakest also with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it with thine hand to this day. Therefore, now, O Lord, Yahweh, the power of Israel, Yahshua, keep with thy servant David, my father, that thou hast promised him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Yahshua, so that thy children. So that thy children take heed to their way and that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. And now, O power of Israel, Yahshua, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified, which thou speakest unto thy servant David, my father. So within context, right, we can see that uh, Solomon was praying for the sake of Israel. Mm -hmm. right? He was praying for the sake of Israel. He wasn't praying for the sake of the enemies of Israel that David had just put down. All right. Now, when you go through here, it talks about when Israel gets put to flight, if there's famine, if there's no rain, no matter where we are, if, if we do a trespass, I'll start at 31. If we trespass against our neighbor, that he would hear us. All right. And he would uh, he would listen to us. All right. But does that make us heathen? Are we heathens? You know, are we strangers? According to what Solomon is saying here. First, we want to deal with this topic of. Uh, the neighbor i want to deal with the neighbor first then we'll get to the heathen because first kings 8 and 31 it says if any man trespass against his neighbor and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear and the oath come before thine altar in this house then hear thou in heaven and do and judge thy servants condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head and justify the righteous to give him according to his righteousness now our neighbor isn't just anyone all right when we go because what people would do and Christians will try to do, they'll try to say that when it says love thy neighbor, that's talking about everyone. All right. mm -hmm. When you go to Deuteronomy 10 and 19, it says, love ye therefore the stranger. All right. Love ye therefore the stranger for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Now, this is just talking about foreigners. This is just saying that we were foreigners. All right. Well, these strangers are talking about Israelite foreigners. And that's generally what this topic is about. And when you go in here and you look, you see, you see Gar. All right, and then you see Garium. All right, Wahabath, Wahabatham, Ath Hagar, the stranger, Kaya for Garium, for you were strangers. All right, Ha Haya Yatham, which means you all, you were. All right, so typically when, when we look up the word stranger, all right, you're going to see the Hebrew word Gar. Okay, you're going to see the Hebrew word Gar. When you look up the Hebrew word heathen, all right, when you see the Hebrew word nakar, which we're going to get to, that's mm -hmm. generally talking about the heathen. So this question, again, King Solomon prayed for heathens. That's going into more so uh, the verses down. All right, but I wanted to address this because it says, love ye therefore 
you're supposed to love be there for the stranger but it's not just talking about anyone this is still talking about our neighbors all right and now can read um marie leviticus i'm gonna read matthew i'll let you speak on it brother okay leviticus 19 18 says thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people so hear that children of thy people mm -hmm. thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself i am the lord another one down here matthew 5 and 43 ye have heard that it hath been said thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy verse uh, matthew 19 and 19 honor thy father and thy mother thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself um 22 and 39 and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself you want to expound on that too huh? yes sir um again like the uh, Zaquan was saying you know that neighbor is talking about israelites back when the lord was given the laws statutes and commandments you know uh, he gave it unto moses and moses gave it out unto uh, the rest of israel he was saying to what to israel all right when you go to i, I actually had I actually had um leviticus 19. okay when you, go to, when you go to leviticus 19 and 1 it says in yahweh speak unto moses saying speak unto all the congregation of the children of israel and say unto them ye shall be holy for i the lord yahweh your power am holy and when you go down you can see who this is addressed to because it says speak unto all the congregation of the children of israel now verse 17 when you go to verse 17 it says thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him see that's the scriptures are oftentimes synonymous like the first scripture will be synonymous with the second scripture part of the scripture mm -hmm. it says thou shalt not hate thy brother and then later on it says thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor because neighbor and brother are interchangeable and it's still talking about those of the israelites you see and then verse 18 like the elder said Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. So the neighbor and brother is talking about Israel. It's not talking about those of the other nations. You see, when, every time when it dealt with the laws, not laws, our statutes, commandments, when it dealt with uh, um, deliverance and saving, it always, when it, dealt, when it deals with repentance, it always deals with what? our people it's not mm -hmm. talking about the other nations you see i had another sure. one uh, mm -hmm. i had another one in exodus um the point uh, after oh, well, I get it. Uh, this is uh exodus um this is exodus 12 and verse um 43 and it says in yahweh said unto moses and aaron this is the ordinance of the passover there shall no stranger eat thereof now this is funny you have one point that says there's no stranger, there shall no stranger eat thereof. But on the other hand, you'll see further down, it's gonna say if a stranger shall keep it. So which one is it? Are right, you gotta you got to uh you know, like the scripture says, these things are spiritually discerned, right? You go to verse 44, it says, But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. All right, a foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof you see that so a foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof all right so this is different than that what is being spoken about in verse 44 when it says but every man's servant that is bought for money you have to you have to realize you have uh israelite servants back there okay all right and it says um it's a lot it says um verse 46 in one house shall it be eaten thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house neither shall ye break a bone thereof all the congregation of israel shall keep it and here's the point another point 48 and when a stranger shall sojourn with thee and will keep the passover to the lord see the only way the stranger can keep it is if the stranger was a uh, um, was an israelite Salakia. only way he can keep the passover is if that stranger is an israelite it says, uh, and we'll keep the Passover to the Lord, that all his males be circumcised. And then let him come near and keep it, and he shall be as one that is born in the land. See that? So the only, the only meaning for that word stranger is an Israelite that was born outside of the land of Israel. Remember the, uh, the three major uh, high holy days 
um, what was that? The uh, Passover, the, the Feast of Weeks, the, with the Pentecost, and what was the other one? It was the um, Salakia. Salakia is one more that's um, a major uh, high holy day because it's three. Well, all Israel you, comes. Well, all Israel comes to um, worship at I the. Got you. Uh, Right here, bro. Deuteronomy 16 and 16. Yeah, yeah, Three times in a year shall all the males appear before the Lord Yahweh al thy power, in the place Yahweh al in the place where which he shall choose, in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and in the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Yeah, see that? And that, you know, that actually lines up with Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, when it talks about the seventh, well, well, uh, kind of before that, because the Feast of Unleavened Bread is before that. But um, mm -hmm. the Feast of Weeks and then the Feast of Tabernacles, both of those are within, if I'm not mistaken, you see, no, Salakia. Salakia, the unleavened bread, the Passover is the first month, and the Feast mm -hmm. of Tabernacles is the seventh month. So Salakia on that. Salakia, I don't, don't want to get it wrong. Come. All right, but, you know, again, going to the point, the Feast of Tabernacles is one of the, uh, the third high holy day that I was trying to mention. That's mm -hmm. one of the major ones that Israel comes back to uh, uh, the land of Israel to celebrate. And it says, um, and when a stranger shall sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. All right. So when it talks about the stranger right there, all right, it's talking about an Israelite. And verse 49 says, one law shall be to him that is homeborn and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. See that? So homeborn means what? An Israelite that was born in Israel. So the stranger will mean an Israelite that is born outside. See? And I just wanted to get yep. that point. It's lucky for the confusion uh, out there because um, earlier I sent the, um, a text to the chat about the uh, three our holy days to the um to the seventh month that we're in Come. I'm kind of more confused Come. so let's go back to um first kings um the eighth chapter and now let's let's get to the point because now we're in, you see in 33 it says when thy people israel be smitten down all right um before thy enemy because they have sinned against thee and shall turn again which means repent and confess thy name, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, and pray and make supplication unto the house. Then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of the people of Israel, Yahshua, and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. Now that's another important key. That if if Solomon prayed for heathen, then why would how the heathen are not supposed to be uh, possess our land? Mm -hmm. Right, the land and the, and the territory would not be left to other people, like uh, it was prophesied in uh, Daniel, if I'm not mistaken. All right. So now let's go, let's jump down to verse 41. And this is that word that we love to see. Moreover, all right, which means equal to. Nothing has changed just because we see the word moreover here. Mm -hmm. All right. So when it says moreover concerning a stranger, meaning an Israelite foreigner, that is not of thy people, Israel, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake. And that's another important thing. That's right. The, because the Lord said his name is dreadful among the heathen. Let me look that up. Yeah, Malachi 1 and 14. It says, But cursed be the deceiver which hath in his flock a male, and valeth a sacrifice unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord, Yahweh, Tazabawah, the Lord of hosts. And my name is dreadful among the heathen. So let's just look up heathen here. Let's see what the heathen says. Might say Gawayam. Yeah, it says Bagawayam. All right, which means within the heathen. All right, Ba meaning in or within. And then Gawayam is how, is, which basically means nations. You know, mm -hmm. it can mean nations. It could also mean heathen. And the scripture, it specifically says heathen for a reason. All right, so if someone's coming from a far country for thy namesake, because the, what they'll try to do too is I'm just thinking of precepts they'll try to use they'll try to use the, uh, the Queen of Sheba mm -hmm. because remember she came to question Solomon and it, it was centered around the name you know but she wasn't coming to repent you know she was coming bearing gifts as inquiring of the name see this 
prayer is in the form of repenting, you know, a prayer put forth so that Israelite foreigners could come back, not that complete heathens could join the ranks of Israel and get repentance and salvation. We're going to see that in the next verse. It says, for they shall hear of thy great name and of thy strong hand or thy stretched out arm when he shall come and pray towards this house. Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all the stranger calleth to thee. Now the scripture says, if, if you turn your ear away from hearing the laws of the Mosai, then even your prayers are abomination. Mm -hmm. The laws off, of, off, of, off the rip weren't even given to the heathen in the first place. So by mm -hmm. default, they don't have access to pray on the right hand to the right hand side of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai to receive repentance, to receive salvation and protection from the judgment that's coming. It says that all the people of the earth may know thy name to fear thee as to do as do thy people Israel. See, so if he's praying for strangers, if Solomon is praying for heathens, then why is he saying as do the people Israel in this verse? That's right. why it's important to keep reading and that they may know that this house which I have built it is called by thy name. All right. Because of, uh, within Yashar all right. And within uh, in the name of Judah, you know, you had the Lord's name in there. All right. Yeah, the Lord's name in there, and these are the names. This is what we're calling upon as uh, former heathens, you know, for former Gawayam and Nakariam. Now, that's what I did want to look up. When you look up a uh, stranger, moreover, concerning the stranger, it says Wagam, which means in over or, or and also Al Ha Nakaria, all right, upon the heathen of, all right. Now, let's, or the stranger of. Now, when you look up Nakar, we always do this. And we're going to keep on just doing these things. All it says here is foreign or alien, all right, or foreigner, unknown, unfamiliar. That's why you had the Israelites, I think it was the Ephraimites, they said uh, Shiboleth and Shib mm -hmm. and, uh, Fibosheth, if I'm not mistaken. And that was unfamiliar. That was a test. That's, there's a, and there's a reason why um, lineages is all, are always listed, and it's important to say Banya Sha'ala, Banya Hawada, so it can be recorded that, okay, this man is an Israelite, he goes back to this clan. All right, but now in these times, we're not able to do that. It's according to the spirit. That's why Solomon prayed. He prayed for the Nakarium, which, again, the Nakarium are Israelite foreigners. All right. You have anything before I got to the Hellenization? Yes, sir. Um this is uh, Psalm 69 and 7. Oh. It says, uh, because, because for thy sake I have borne reproach, shame have covered my face. It says, um, matter of fact, verse 6, it says, uh, let not them that wait on thee, O Lord, power of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel. Because for thy sake I have borne reproach, Shame have covered my face. Verse 8. I am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children. All right. Now, how can he actually become an actual stranger unto his brethren? All right. If he's an Israelite and the brethren are Israelites, the way you can become a stranger is, uh, is in mindset. All right. When you go to um when you go to the interlinear and look up that word stranger, because you have gar. You have Nakar, as the elder brought out, and the other word you have for stranger is a uh, zawar, za wa and ra zawar, and you look it up and it means, um, hence to be a foreigner, strange, profane, to commit adultery. All right, um, another fanner go away, strange. So you can become strange in your mindset. Now uh, that's mm -hmm. you know uh, like the brother. Somebody put on there Ephesians the second chapter. That's what happened. Yep. Our people um, were, um, wherefore remember that ye being in time past, this is crumbs from the master's uh, table, Ephesians 2 and 11. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles, how can we be in time past Gentiles if Gentiles is talking about the actual other nations and strangers? All right, we're, we're that in mindset. It says in the flesh who are called uncircumcision, all right, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Yes, because the circumcision was the ones that was calling um, these Israelites in a Gentile state of mind. They were calling them uncircumcised. They were calling them heathen. They were calling them strangers. But guess what? They were still Israelites. 
And this right. real quick, this is verse 11 in the NLT, bro. It says, therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision. I'm so lucky. The NLT is right here. That was the NIV. Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews wow. who were proud of their circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. Yeah, and, and, uh, yeah it, it affect their bodies and not their hearts because it's about, it's about your mindset, too. You know, the true Israelites are the Israel of the Most High, you know, mm -hmm. but, but in the technical sense, they're still Israelites. You know, it's not given to the other nations. It's right, locked in. Right. You good. We want to finish up verse 12 and 13, and we'll, we'll continue. Uh, let me see. It's locked in. Yeah, Khan. Uh, Ephesians 2 and 12, it says that at that time, you were without Hamashiach, being aliens or strangers from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without the most high in the world. Yeah, because when, once we got Hellenized, like the elders going into the Hellenization, we lost all that. We lost. We lost the law, statutes, commandments. We lost our power. We lost our heritage. We were discontinued. So therefore, we were alienated, without the truth. You see, verse thirteen it says, "But now, but now, in Hamashiach Yahushai, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Yahushai, because through Yahushai, that's how we are delivered. All right, for he is our peace." Who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us through 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 yahweh shah we are able to get back to the heavenly father yahweh both uh um those that know they are jews already and those that are just coming in you know the uh in the gentile state of mind there's only one access way into the heavenly father and that's through yahweh shah Oh, so like I was going to say, it's almost as if Yahweh Shah in his past life when he was King Solomon, that prayer was really for the elect. Yes, sir. Because only the elect is going to come back and call on his names. And then when he came back, when he came as Yahweh Shah, John the 17th chapter, he prayed for the elect again. Mm -hmm. So it's like he did it twice, you know? Yes, sir. Yeah, because you had um, you had Israelites that hated the Lord. Mm-hmm. You know, so so it's not just about being just an Israelite. It's about being an Israelite that believes on the program of Yahweh, and Yahweh told us to what have faith in His Son, plain and simple. Come, on. I got the scripture from uh, the brother Gabar Yahweh, yes, sir. Uh, Shalom, uh, Shalom. Romans nine and six. It says, "Not as though the word of power had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel." You know, so we we even understand that you have the Israelite foreigners. They're just going to stay heathen. Scripture talks about if they will not listen to the, you're supposed to count him as a heathen man. That's literally as a foreigner. Somebody's coming with a different doctrine or belief. You know, you're intertwined with that. You are in jeopardy of getting judged for that. All right, here it is. You're trying to turn back with all your mind, your whole heart, find out that you're Israelite, and you got a Jake that's maybe half-assing and only believing a certain amount. That's not going to work. That Hellenization, which we're going to go into, is going to spill over onto you, and then you, and then you, and then you're going to be in jeopardy of being Israel that's not of Israel. Now I want to read this that he put here, and then I'm going to read this uh, here in Maccabees. Uh, this it says the, the the Hellenic influence per, pervaded everything, and even in the very strongholds of Judaism, it modified the organization of the state, the laws, and public affairs, art, science, industry affecting even ordinary things of life and the common associations of the people that's exactly how it was during the time of slavery bro that's right. it affected everything i mean it all the way down to how your family functioned what type of work you were able to get uh, what language you were speaking um how you traded in money you know um the, of course uh, religious beliefs you know spirituality the bread and circuses all that stuff took part and we're going to remember read i'm going to speed read this here in second maccabees um it's the sixth chapter it says not long after this the king sent an old man of athens to compel the jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of the most high and to pollute also the temple in jerusalem yerushalam and to call it the temple of jupiter olympus and that in gerism of jupiter the defender of strangers you see that the defender of strangers as they did desire that dwelt in the place 
The coming in of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people, for the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles who dally, the natural born ones, our Edomites, mm -hmm. who dally with harlots and had to do, because in this turn, if I'm not mistaken, it was during this time when a lot of Edomites converted over to um, our beliefs. They started calling themselves uh, Jews. You know, that's why Herod, he, uh, a lot of the Herodians, they got with the uh, Jake women. And then the kids came out and they look like Israelites, you know, God. just as a side note, it God. says it had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places. And besides that brought in things that were not lawful. The altar also was defiled with profane things, which the law forbiddeth. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days. Again, that's part of that Hellenization. Let me put that back up. That affects your spirituality man that's that stop that stops you from turning back from the heavenly father that is a day of rest and supposed to be reverence it's in the ten commandments all right it says or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a jew and in the day of the king's birth every month there was brought a bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices when the feast of bacchus was kept basically carnival and jews were compelled to go in procession to bacchus carrying Jew, uh, Jewy. Well, basically, it was a parade. They paraded us around like they did during slavery. You know, you see that it's like Good Bible Tom had him, Jake's dressed up in all silver, little boys. You know, that's completely wicked. That was part of the Hellenization. So now we understand by the time you get to Ephesians, it makes sense why it's saying this. Yep. You were called uncircumcised heathen. So when we go back to um, Solomon's prayer, was he praying for heathen? No, he was praying for our people that got wrecked, man. Are people whose minds who got mangled and they would eventually would wake up all right from from that from the impending disaster and destruction that they've been warned about all right and come back to the fold to believe and the most important thing that here it says here i'm gonna read it again moreover concerning a stranger that is not of thy people israel but cometh out of a far country for what for thy name's sake that's what it's all about man that's the glue the names yahweh and yahweh when you pray and we confess our sins we're repenting to specific people, man. Right? And only Israelites had that ability to do that. And specifically, really, the elect. Yahweh Shah shed his blood for the elect. Not all Israel is going to be delivered on this side. Yes, Israel will be saved with the everlasting salvation. But like we just read in Romans 9 and 6, not all Israel, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Mm -hmm. So some of the Israels, yes, they're going to stay heathens. <laughs> and, and King Solomon didn't pray for you because you want to stay a heathen. So we got to add that in there, you know. Right. That's all. That's all I had, bro. You got something else? Con. Con. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah. Uh, my bad. Uh, First Corinthians twelve and two. Yes, you know that you were Gentiles carried away unto those dumb idols as you were led. So here you have Israelite foreigners in Corinth, and Paul wrote to that specific church town. Look, y'all came up out of that that Greek lifestyle. You were Gentiles. You were, you were worshiping Jupiter and Olympus, the defender of the strangers, which you thought you were. You know, that's why this letter was the longest. <laughs> you guys are gone. God, this, this is uh, um, Genesis Genesis uh, 12 and verse uh, 1. It says, Now Yahweh has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house, the land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Now that great nation is talking about Israel, because you know after um, he, even though he had uh, what seven other children, he had Ishmael, then he had six sons of the Torah. The, the the nation that was going to be made a great nation was going to come through his son Isaac, and Isaac, and then Jacob, and then the tribes. And it says um, verse three. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. All right. Now I want to get the uh, other part to that. I want to get Galatians, Galatians 3 and verse uh, 6. It says, uh, even as Abraham believed Yahweh, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, Number one, in order to have faith, you have to be an Israelite because it's given to you by spiritual gifts. You already started in First Corinthians, the 12th chapter, that deals with spiritual gifts. All right, so you have to be an Israelite to receive of this faith. It says the same 
are the children of Abraham. So the ones that have faith are just like Abraham or just like the Israelites are um, the Israelites that have faith are just like their forefather Abraham. Okay, Abraham was surrounded by um, the sons of God in the heathen state of mind, talking about his forefathers on up. Mm -hmm. and like and like mine, uh, Israel will be scattered abroad. All right, likened unto the heathen. All right, but they'll be just like Abraham through faith. They'll come back uh, just like Abraham through faith. Verse eight. It says in the scripture, we're seeing that the Most High would justify. The heathen through faith. Now, justify means to make righteous. So the Lord will make righteous the heathen through faith. Even though it says heathen there, you know that's talking about Israelites. Heathen is synonymous with uh, stranger, uncircumcised, Gentile. You see? We're seeing mm -hmm. that the Messiah would justify, make righteous the heathen through faith. Priest before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In these shall all nations be blessed. Why? Because the same way Abraham believed and he was of the sons of God and he was in a, um, another state of mind, but he came back to the Lord is the same way the blessing will go out to Israel that's scattered amongst all the other nations. It will be just like their forefather Abraham coming out of those different doctrines, philosophies wherein they have been scattered and they will come back to Yahweh Shah through faith. It's the same thing. Just yeah. like us. Just like us, we, we we didn't know who we were. We were all Gentiles in one of uh, a state of mind. At one point in time, we were all in a Gentile state of mind until the Lord woke us up. Yeah. I.e., we what we became like our forefather Abraham. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to get that part because Christians will you know like to use that scripture too. Yeah, and all, again, all it says, and it's important you said that is because the word for heathens there in the in the New Testament Hebrew is Gawayam. When you go to Galatians chapter three, verse eight is Galayim, which just simply means a nation, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to end it here, bro. Yes, sir. Uh, Tobit thir 13 and uh, started one. Then Tobit wrote a prayer, here go Tobit's prayer, of rejoicing and said, blessed be the power that lives forever and blessed be his kingdom. For he doeth scourge and have mercy. He leadeth down to hell and bringeth up again. Neither is there any that can avoid his hand. Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel, for he has scattered us among them. Yes, sir. There, where? Among the Gentiles, mm -hmm. all right, declare his greatness and extol him before all the living, for he is our Lord, our power, and he is the power of our Father forever. Our Father forever. He will scourge us for our iniquities and will have mercy again because of that prayer and will gather us out of all nations among whom he has scattered us. All right, just going forward, just showing you another point in time that even Tobit knew that we were scattered among the heathen. And in his prayer, he knew that in his mind, he knew that, okay, we're going to be Israelite foreigners. We have, he, his name has to be confessed among the heathen because he has Israelites scattered out there. So now when they hear the names, they can come back. They can understand the mercies that were, that were uh, placed upon the house of David, you know, for the, for the hopeful elect remnant of Israel, you know? That's right. But that's pretty much it, you know? Just wanted to answer that question. If King Solomon prayed for heathens, Technically, yeah, he did. <laughs> Technically, he didn't. Depends on how you're explaining. All right, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema All right, so with that, we give all praises to our power, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shad by Hashem, Rakahakudash, Shalom to the elect, and double honors to our elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Shalom. Double Shalom.